Hey everyone, Andrew here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take an existing view application that uses the previous options API and convert it to use the newer composition API. The composition API was released with view three and is an umbrella term that covers three of the following APIs, reactivity, lifecycle hooks, and dependency injection. It is kind of the de facto standard for writing new applications in Vue 3 and is also retroactively available to Vue 2 applications as well through this Vue Composition API plugin. And while I do believe that the Composition API makes writing Vue code easier and more streamlined, the Options API has no plans on being deprecated anytime soon, and you can still use it with Vue 3. Okay, so let's dive right into it. I've gone ahead and created this example application for this video, and it's basically an e-commerce shopping cart. So we have three items here, and we can adjust the quantity of each of them, and have it update in real time in this total column here, as well as in this order summary on the right side. And if we drop the quantity of one item down to zero, it will automatically remove that as well. If we open up the source code for this, I just have this one component called shopping cart, that has the bulk of the HTML and the layout all right here. And then toward the bottom, we see the actual view script where we're using the options API and we have props for a title. We have our data object, which is returning just a products array. And then we have a few methods as well. We have a decrease and increase quantity. The reason that I split these into methods is because the decrease quantity, once it hits zero, it should remove that product from the array. And then lastly, we have a computed property as well to calculate the total cost of everything in the cart. Okay, so our goal is to convert this to the composition API. And because of that, we're really only going to be focusing on what's in between these script tags, the view code that's below here. Anything in the template is really not going to be changed between the options API and the composition API. So we can just focus on this. Now the composition API syntax is pretty different compared to what we have here, but I'll take it step by step as I replace each of these parts. To make this easier, I'm going to build on top of the existing script tag, a new one that will contain all of our composition API code. This way we can still reference the old code below as we build this out. Like we have with the options API, we need to start with an export default object. But unlike the options API, instead of containing attributes for the data return object, the methods and computed properties, everything comes under a single entry point, and that is through this setup method here. This is the basis for using the composition API. To create a data attribute, we just create a constant called products, and we can set it as an array. And then to use that element in our application, we have to return it back from the setup method. So at the end of this setup method, a return object is expected that exposes all of the data attributes and methods throughout this component. But this doesn't give us reactivity out of the box. If we were to update this data down the line, we wouldn't be able to actually see the changes happening. In order to make that possible in the composition API, Vue gives us two different options for adding reactivity into our components. We have ref and reactive. And we can import these from the main Vue package. Both of these work in similar ways, providing reactivity to your component, but they also have a key difference. So if I was to use ref here, our products array now has reactivity and can be updated and watched in real time through the rest of our component. In order to update it though, we can't just access the root products array. So we can't do something like push to this direct array. Instead, we have to use the value attribute on the products array and then push to that. Anytime you use ref, you're not able to access the direct attribute itself. You have to use this value property first to get the actual value of the reactive attribute. Reactive though acts different. So reactive, you can access the root attribute itself. So we could do products.push. But the downside though is that reactive really only works with objects. So instead of providing a blank array, we would provide something like items and then an array inside of an object. And then that way we could call products items and push a new item to it. For that reason, when it comes to arrays, I like just using ref 
it makes it easier, even though I have to use that value middleman property. And regardless, by using ref with an array, it's actually passing it to reactive under the hood. Okay, so we have our products array set and is being returned from this setup method. But this setup method is really only useful if you're using the composition API in connection with the options API. You see, because we have everything under this export default object, we can actually use this setup method in our old options API component down here as well. So this gives some kind of wiggle room when you're upgrading components in larger applications to do this piece by piece instead of rewriting the entire component at once. But because we are not using the options API on this moving forward, there's actually a much easier way that we can do this. So instead of just calling script, we can call script setup. And what it does behind the scenes is implicitly export a default object consisting of a setup method and returns back any variables initialized in between the tag. So we can actually remove this and all of this. So now even though we didn't say it explicitly, this products is now available to our entire template just by using this setup in the script tag. Okay, like I said earlier though, this is our products array. So I'm going to take the array of products from our previous options API and add that in there. All right, so we have our products. Next on the list, we need props. So we have a tile coming in as a string, which sets this title up here in this h1 element. In order to use props with this script setup, we just have to import another method called define props. And then we use it like this, const props equals define props. And it expects an object consisting of the props that we want to have in this template. And in our case, that was a title that is a string. And that's it. So now moving past our products array that we have that's reactive, the next item on our list is to create some methods. Now we have this decrease quantity and increase quantity method that both take an index and set the quantity of a product to minus one or plus one. Now in order to use methods in the composition API, we don't have to have a special place for them. They don't have to be set underneath an attribute called methods or anything like that. Just like with attributes like our products array, you just have to create a function in this script tag and it will automatically be available to the rest of the template. So we could say something like const foo is a function and it logs something in the console. So now we can use this foo function in the template. Okay, well, our methods are decrease quantity and it's a function that takes the index of a product and we also have one for increase quantity. And we can just copy the functionality that we had below. So for decrease, we call products index. But if the quantity drops to zero, again, we splice it out of the products array. And then increase quantity is just upping the specific products quantity by one. One thing to keep in mind though, is we're calling this products, but we have the products array as a constant at the same scope as these two methods. And again, we're using ref here, so we actually have to access it through the value middleman attribute. So instead of this products, it becomes products.value and then the index. And that's true for all of these down here as well. Okay, so we have our methods here. We have our data attributes. Our props. And now lastly, we need our computed properties. Again, in the options API, these were under a specific heading, computed, and consisted of methods, just like our methods above. But because these are not actually called, they're instead referenced in real time, we have to do something different. We can't just initialize this total cost method like we did with these two up here. Instead, we have to import one more method from the view library. So up here, after define props, we also import computed. 
and then we use it like this. So we'll paste in our previous function from the computed attribute down below from the options API. And we can say const total costs is equal to computed, which is a method whose only argument is a function that returns back the computed property that we are after. So it's essentially just a wrapper method for a standard function that we might see up here. And like our other methods, we need to remove this dot products and instead call products that value since this is at the same scope as our products array. Okay, I think that's about it actually. Let's go ahead and remove this real quick so that we can go in our browser to see if our hard work has paid off. Okay, and refreshing, everything looks exactly how it did before. Our quantities are updating as expected. And if we drop one down to zero, it gets removed as we expect as well. Our sidebar is updating the total as we expected, which means that our computed property is working. Our title is here, which means that our props are working. And everything in this section is working as expected, which means that our products array is reactive. And let's open up the console just for good measure and make sure there's no errors there. There isn't which means that we have successfully updated this component to use the composition API. Now, one of the big questions that I've been asked before is, well, why should I use the composition API? Is the options API good enough? And depending on your use case, you might not have a reason to switch. But for me personally, it's about organization. What do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look at the options API, we can see that we have a specific area for our data, a specific area for our methods, and a specific area for computed properties. This kind of breaks up the flow of different parts of your components. It might not really look like it from this example because I'm only using one data attribute, this products, but let's say I had a different data attribute called like user, and we had an object with some user properties. Now, if I wanted to have a computed property with that user's name and email in a single string, we could call it like user info, return this user name plus this user email. We have this break now between the data attribute being initialized and the computed property with this string down here. We have all of this stuff in the middle that has nothing to do with the users. It's all stuff from the products. And that's because we have to put everything into these blocks for methods, computed, data, and so on. Whereas instead, in the composition API, especially with this script setup tag, everything is kind of just at the base scope level, which means that we can place things where we want them in areas that make sense. So this is everything that deals with products. And I don't have to put my user object underneath this products array here. Instead, I could put it all the way at the bottom and create a new separate section for users. Const user is reactive, and it's an object with a name and an email. And then our computed property can go right below that. So user string is a computed property that returns back a function consisting of the user's name and user's email. And in my opinion, that organization makes writing components and going through components, especially for maintenance or adding new features or fixing bugs, a lot easier. Okay, I think that's about it for this video. You've seen how we can refactor a pretty basic view component from the options API to the composition API. If there's any particular parts of this tutorial that you would like me to expand on, let me know and I'll try to make a follow-up video on it. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or in the comments below. Thanks for watching.